and you should all get a little pop up there about the recording. Uh, so once you click that, you can continue with the webinar and I'll hand over to you, Lisa. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Rob. And thanks for the reminder to turn on the sound. I always forget that one. Um, I'm delighted to be here today. And really, I'm only one part of the double act because Rob and myself worked on this uh, particular example that I'm going to share with you today um, for our annual teaching and learning event. So when I use the royal we, um, I am mostly referring to a lot of the work that Rob has done in the background to make this all happen. But basically what I want to talk to you about today is the um, escape room functionality and how we used uh, Moodle to support that as part of a playful approach to our annual teaching and learning event. So just in case you want to follow up with any questions at all, you can obviously follow up with, with, with Rob and you'll find me um, at Doug Donaldson on Twitter as well. Twitter, of course, being the last platform standing last night, but that's OK. Um, just, just to note that what I'm going to be speaking about today refers to 1.4, the digital, excuse me, the digital CPD of the DigiCompEDU framework. So without further ado, and I know we're, we're tight on time, we present an annual teaching and learning event, so a CPD event for our staff in DCU. Uh, this turned into an online format with the, the pandemic. And for the second year running, it has been a um, purely online event with both live and recorded sessions. We're very conscious of um, Zoom fatigue and the amount of time we've been spending on screens. What I really wanted to engender in this event was very much a playful approach, uh, uh, an engaging approach to trying to work with our staff uh, with regards to CPD. So you can just see that snapshot there. The event took place uh, September 1st through 3rd. So as well as live events, lightning talks and, and very much some interesting flippities and videos, what we also did um, was create a couple of escape rooms. So I just really want to talk to you from that perspective. Um, what we actually did was two escape rooms. What you can see on screen was the first one, which was I'm an academic, get me out of here. And that was um, a live escape room done through breakout rooms and on a collaborative basis, which actually was fantastic fun, fun to, fun to build and fun to do. And the idea behind escape rooms really is that they can create a high level of engagement because I'm not sure if any of you have been in an escape room before and if you have you can pop it in the chat if you've done a real live one but this concept um, has started to spread into education and, and certainly within CPD in higher education um, it can offer that immersive problem solving experience now in, and, and take it into the educational context. So um, what research is sharing is showing is that it's really quite an engaging, fun way for uh, participants to take an active role in their learning. And that, that was one of the reasons that I wanted to embrace it. Now, this particular escape room that I, I wanted to discuss today, um, the premise behind it was that there was new features of Moodle. And just for context, and if you see it in the slides, we call our Moodle instance loop, just so that there's no confusion there. Um, so we had some new features of loop or Moodle coming. And what I wanted to do was to get to share that learning on, 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 on how these new um, features worked and what their functionality was about without it being very prescriptive and very didactic. So I wanted people to engage and, and play with it them, themselves. As it turned out, some of those new features didn't actually become available um, of, for the start of term. So Rob and I switched it on its head. And what we looked at was enhancing lecturers' knowledge of UDL, Universal Design for Learning. And we were looking then to encourage them to use Moodle in a more inclusive way. So the, the learning behind what we did was to promote that, to promote that more in the inclusive design of modules. 
So actually what the escape room did was serve as a front end to a series of Moodle activities that um, we designed a narrative about. So the narrative with this particular escape room and with escape rooms, it is the, the, the design takes time and, and the, the narrative takes time. But I think that's that's very important to keep that going through. But the narrative with this one was it was the night before term started and you had to be ready for classes the next morning, but you still had some work to do. So the work that they needed to do were the Moodle activities and the escape room front end brought them into that Moodle space. So I'm just going to take one second to move these out of the way and show you the escape room itself just so you get a feel for what that was about. So you can see the live timer is there and you can move around the room and see that they were clues. So in essence, what the uh, participants needed to do was we started them by some basic UDL um, knowledge and at least pointing them to where they could get more information about UDL, which was to our website. So. What happened then once they solved the clue and reviewed that site was that they could go to the lock and the unlock code, they needed the answer and that would release the URL for the Moodle page. So, moving on. We did do a brief evaluation after, I'm going to go into the activities now, but just a brief evaluation after. And it, it did seem that this approach um, worked well for those that participated in it. Um, so you can see a quote there, real live quote from a real live participant. And uh, also in the evaluation, when we asked what were the most useful things, 42% um, specifically mentioned the escape room out of probably a suite of 15 different activities that we offered for teaching and learning week. So without further ado, um, this was our loop or our Moodle uh, page for all of these activities. So completing the escape room, release the URL for here. And um, the, the participants then self-enrolled in this particular course. Now we set up a, a we, Royal We, set up a, a role, a, a type of role called editing student. And it was basically this student role. Um, but it allowed them the ability to manage activities and uh, resources, etc. cetera. Um, it could have been added as a teacher role, but with the um, level of gamification block that, that Rob was uh, putting in the background, they wouldn't have been able to be awarded points um, because that can only be awarded for participation. So hence that particular role. Um, so, Rob did a lot of work, all of the heavy lifting in the background here. Um, so there was a shell set up for these editing students to work with the activities. Again, the, the narrative um, joined all of these activities together. So we use the tiles format and the participants each had a tile to complete these various activities. Um, the each tile had a book, a choice, a forum, and an assignment. And the way they opened the tile was because they, the first task was to assign themselves into a group. And in signing themselves into a group, which was just simply choosing a color, which was just using the choice tool, um, that opened up that particular tile for them. So what I want to do is just give you a flavor then of the little tasks that um, were designed. Now that is quite pale, but basically um, what task two was about was we have as part of our UDL um, Moodle um, design, uh, we have a, a module handbook. And in that module handbook, welcome messages can be recorded for the students. And that's what we're trying to encourage. So um, task two was to record a welcome message for the students themselves. Now, we gave instructions on um, each tile because some of these tasks needed to be completed slightly differently than they would do in the normal circumstance just because of the way that this, this was set up. And after each task, they were returned to move on. Now, we, I, should, I should say with each task completed, 
they got points, but I'll talk about that in a second. So um, with this particular uh, task, this is just a snapshot because what we wanted to do was get them to examine and embrace the possibility of using ePortfolio because we have the Mahara ePortfolio platform here in DCU. And of course, ePortfolio, very, very useful for multiple means of representation and multiple media can be used. So we wanted it again, just to highlight that as a potential option for assessment. So for this particular task, the participants had to just set up an assignment submission and um, tick the box so that it would be a Mahara submission. Oh, sorry, that was the previous one. I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's my assignment, yes. Um, so moving on, points. So in this, points mean prizes. This is a competitive uh, event. Now I should say that while the first escape room was a collaborative event that took place within a breakout room in teams, this was a standalone, uh, if you like, offline activity in that it was completed on the final morning of the teaching and learning week. And it took place or it was open to, to, for uh, use between nine and 12. So what we needed the participants to do was to uh, embrace the room and then we would um, be able to award prizes later. So for every condition that was met, so for every activity that was marked as completed, um, the participants gained prizes. So this was done using the level up. So that's a gamification tool that can award students XP points for doing certain things. Um, so it's been used heavily within DCU for the online orientation to, to, to motivate students to complete all of their orientation tasks. So it just was a really good fit with the, the playful theme that we wanted to, to see running throughout our teaching and learning week. Um, so with Level Up, you can invent your own points, but we kept this schema very simple. So um, simply you were awarded 20 points uh, for each level or each activity that you um, were able to complete as part of, of part of this. And when you completed all five uh, of the activities, um, you earned 100 points and you progressed then to the next level. And that's that next level was that you were ready to start the term. So as I said, this was a time limited event uh, on the last day. So it was before the closing session. So the way this worked was that I ran a report just before we went live for the, la for the final session um, to, to see who were the winners and who had completed all of the activities. So as you can see there, 14 people completed the activity and six actually, sorry, 14 people attempted the activity and six actually successfully completed um, escaping the room and all of the Moodle activities that came uh, afterwards. So those six names were entered into a live draw during the final session and therefore that's how prizes were awarded. So that is a very brief run through of how we try to make um, CPD playful, how we try to make CPD, CPD um, engaging. And based on the feedback, it was, it was quite successful. Now, I think Rob will attest that there was a lot of work involved in this. So um, having designed another escape room as well, I would absolutely um, concur. There is a lot of work with designing these kinds of activities, but I think it's it's well worth it for the engagement that it can engender. So on that happy note, as I've whizzed through that, I'm more than happy to take any questions, but I will be very firmly pointing any of the more technical questions on the spec of the Moodle page over to um, our erstwhile host. So. Okay, um, thanks Rob and, and thanks for the invitation and, and hopefully as I say, Helen 
gets um gets better soon and you have the the runner up prize essentially listening to me but um <clears throat> what i want to do is extend on what lisa was chatting about there about the the, the game of fighter playful approach that she took to staff development and highlight to you uh, some options for doing it in moodle we did um, use several plugins as, as we do in DCU to enhance it but what I want to do is to concentrate on the elements that are core Moodle so that everybody in the room will be able to uh, utilize these to a greater or lesser extent. There may be additional plugins uh, that make it better or make it easier but I just do want to for the sake of, of today and, and considering the wide audience that we have over 85 different people from different institutions may not have all the plugins at their disposal uh, to use. So um, just want to make sure you can see my screen. Can you give us a thumbs up, Rob, if you can see it, yeah? Yeah, all good. Yeah, great stuff. Okay. So um, <clears throat> just moving on to explain and uh, to clear up some um, confusion that can sometimes rise when talking about gamification. I put these three definitions, not my own definitions, but put these three definitions on, on the screen. And what I want to talk about is gamification. So using of the principles of games, um, the mechanics of games rather than games themselves. I, I don't bring Monopoly into a classroom and teach people accounting, or I don't have um, a very expensive computer simulation made specifically for me to do this. I just want to bring elements of games into it. And uh, that's what I want to chat about today. So to do that, I want to put it in context and show you some um, games that could be the bane of your life, depending on, on uh, how much time they actually use up on you. Uh, but something like Candy Crush, one of the most popular uh, games that's available on mobile devices now at the moment. But for those not familiar with it, you have different levels to complete, simple tasks to do. As you progress throughout the levels, they get harder and harder. And there's bonuses along the way uh, as to what you do. You're, you're provided with basic instructions. In this case, it's to bring the cherry down, which you'll see on the top left of the, the screen, bring the cherry down to the bottom of the screen. And several uh, features of the game allow you to do that by bringing fruits to, of the same color together or by using stripies and hitting chocolates off one another, a whole load of different tasks. But the basic element of it starts off very simple and gets more complex as you get more experience. The other element that's very attractive and that can be implemented in your, your Moodle courses is leaderboards. And what they've done here, and you'll see a leaderboard on, on the right hand side of the screen, <coughs> excuse me, for each level they've completed, they get a point. <coughs> and the, um, you'll see here the, the, the person in the lead is on 79 points, the person in second is on 52, and it goes the whole way down. And indeed, you can scroll down to, I think, 15 or 20th position. <clears throat> that leaderboard encourages participation. That leaderboard shows you where you are relative to the top people in the class. And those leaderboards can be easily implemented in, in Moodle. And I'll get on to the, the motivation behind those. And it is important to note that they work for some people. They don't necessarily work for all people. But these are just features that will be available to you. Um, <clears throat> another game I want to bring to your attention, you probably know them already, the Mario Brothers, they've been going around for God knows how long, um, <clears throat> but there's a reason they've been going around for so long, uh, the reason being they have, they have managed to tap into the successful um, options available to people for motivating them and engaging them with the game for over, I, God knows, must be 30 years Mario Brothers is going. But the top screen uh, screenshot that we have <clears throat> is of Mario where he's navigating a particular world and he can fall off the side of that cliff if he wants. And if I'm controlling him, he probably would. But my daughter would be able to jump and navigate 10 times quicker than I would. But there was no consequence to that. When I, when I fail, when I fall off the side of the cliff, I'm just brought back to the same point again and I get a, a chance to try again. So there's that whole consequence or lack of consequence the um, freedom to fail is the buzzwords associated with it. That's implemented in it because it allows people to engage and try and try again. And if you're good, you can progress very far. And if you need that little bit of support, if you need extra boosters along the way, you can get them to help you progress. 
And indeed, the, the bottom screenshot there um, is, I think, it's Mario Kart, if I remember rightly. <clears throat> and as uh, users navigating or racing around uh, racetracks, they can pick up extra bits of information or extra tools that will allow them to complete the course, the racetrack quicker and gain more points and so on. So these are, are elements of games that I think you can bring into your Moodle page. Excuse me just for a second. <clears throat> um, so what I've done here, and this is a slide that I used from a, a previous presentation on gamification, where I said gamification can happen in Moodle at an activity level, at a, a module or a course page level, or across several course pages within Moodle at a, at a program level. <clears throat> and there's various different elements. There's the progress levels. You can tell somebody, and again, if I go back to Mario Kart or indeed Cario, um, Candy Crush, you can see that they are on level one or on level two, or you can see they've half of the first stage completed. So showing a user where they are within your course, giving them those signposts is a very, very useful way to engage your students. <clears throat> giving them the freedom to fail. Uh, and again, there's, there's lots of options open for this, but giving them the opportunity for formative assessment where there is no uh, consequence if they perform very badly, all you want them to do is engage with it, is a good thing. Uh, learning pathways, and there's multitudes of ways of managing each one of these learning pathways, conditional access, or indeed individual rewards. So what I want to do is just go through one or two of the tools uh, that you could use. Conditional access is the one that springs to mind straight away. A lot of people have this uh, restrict access. It's there as, as uh, part of core Moodle, but you can restrict it on a number of different things based on the role that they have. Obviously, teachers can do things students can't. Not editing teachers can do things uh, students can't. And you can change, remember, you can change the permissions right down to an activity level um, within a course page. So some activities, they will have a student role and other activities, they will have teacher capabilities. Um, <clears throat> but you can also change it on attainment. So if they score a particular grade within a quiz, the next topic is released. Or maybe if they score below a particular topic in a quiz, a different topic is released or different content. Um, and indeed you can uh, separate out stuff where groups will only see the content and it can be specific to the groups that they're in within Moodle. So for me, conditional access, the functionality within Moodle, and it's actually called restrict access on the Moodle activities is incredibly useful. And uh, in my opinion, very underutilized in most courses. Um, <clears throat> and again, just to, to uh, expand there, I say from, it can be an individual restriction or it can be a combination of restrictions uh, and uh, it can be an and or an or. So this restriction and this restriction, they must have scored 100% in the quiz and have viewed the uh, discussion form before they get it, or they must have scored 100% in the quiz or viewed the discussion form. Again, it's up to you and it gives you loads of options to engage students. The freedom to fail is a, a great option. And I have a screenshot here of uh, just some of the settings within a quiz. What, what's the grade you give them? Can they do it as many times as they like? Do you give them the highest grade? Do you give them the first grade? And you see that the selections there in front of you, how many attempts do you allow them to do? And we've many, many examples of where lecturers have used quizzes as formative tools, but then use that at the same quiz or at least the same questions as part of the summative quiz at the end of the semester. Um, it's not just restricted to quizzes, you can have it as assignments, they can upload draft versions of the assignment, and that's, it's okay to fail, it's okay to, um, to just have half the assignment done, maybe you only want feedback on the initial side, uh, or the, the first section of your assignment, so that's all you submit, and there's no consequence towards your, uh, your final exam. Workshop is the peer assessment element, so you can have your peers review your content and using the gradebook, you can weight 
the, um, uh, the, the value of that peer assessment as zero when it comes to uh, calculating the final grade. So whether you decide to change the, the uh, activity, the individual settings and activity to give that freedom to fail, or whether you just use the grade book to uh, bring the value of the assignment down to zero, it's 100% up to you. But allowing the students that freedom to fail will bring students out of their shell, particularly those that are, are not that comfortable with the subject. The different pathways, and this has came up several times within the uh, presentation that, that Lisa gave and, and the, the, the Q&A, and Rob, I will ask you to keep an eye on the Q&A uh, if you don't mind and, and jump in if there's anything uh, that you want me to comment on. But um, <clears throat> we came up with the interactive options, the branching scenarios within H5P. Well, you also have the options of lessons, core Moodle activity again, and um, can be done incredibly well where you can embed a quiz within a lesson activity and, or depending on a choice that you give them, a link that you give them. Here, I just have a little screenshot saying scenario your classmate Maria tells you that and give a particular text. And the user then has the option to choose buttons down the bottom of the screen, the previous, the next, or indeed go on to a quiz. So giving them the option of choosing different pathways based on their interests or based on, on their ability, based on their experience, really can work to engage your students in your course. And indeed, somebody mentioned the choice tool. I think it was Kenji earlier on, and Leslie gave a great example of how the choice tool could be used, giving students different pathways is excellent. And one element of, of core Moodle that I think is underutilized is the learning plans, the competencies and the learning plans. You can set a different learning plan at a program level. So outside of the, the individual courses, you can set that for cohorts of students. So all first year engineers must follow this pathway, whereas all first year scientists follow this pathway. It's, it's just one particular option. And, and that can be linked, as I say, to, to competencies and skills embedded within their Moodle pages. So um, that's what I'd say about completion reports. And <clears throat> sorry, that's what I'd say, excuse me, about the learning pathways. But what I have, and, and the, the final thing I just want to, to share with you here at the moment in core Moodle is the activity completions. There's so many different activities that have uh, completion options inserted in them as core, whether it's discussion forms, whether it's assignment, or whether it's even just a label. Um, here you can uh, get a spreadsheet, a report built into Moodle on who has uh, completed the activity and who hasn't, who you might need to give a little nudge to, who you might need to give more support to, or indeed who you may need to reward. And we've done one particular thing as recently as yesterday, where we wanted to, we wanted to get uh, students to be uh, involved in videos, or sorry, to notify them that they would be involved in videos as part of the course material. So we set up a label on the top of our course page, hid everything else within the course, and on the label it said, um, as part of this course, you will be recorded and you will have access to videos. So we went through the relevant data protection statements that was required, but they had to tick the box to say that label was complete. And when they completed that, when they ticked that box, all of the course material was reviewed to them. Now, there was no consequences um, uh, in terms of they weren't able to opt out of the video and so on. But it was to know and to guarantee to us that we could say everybody has read that statement. It's like the terms and conditions you get on your websites. We were able to put that into our individual Moodle course pages. So <clears throat> um, in terms of gamification and all the different elements that uh, we've gotten, all the different elements I've highlighted and indeed the plugins that Lisa mentioned, and Rob mentioned earlier on, what did the feedback say? What did the students say to us about it and how did they engage with it based on the content we have? So students did respond really, really well to the, the knowledge check quizzes at the end, the, the progress bar tools that were there. And indeed we've used labels in other courses where uh, progress bars weren't appropriate. We had just said, congratulations, you've completed step two, three or four. We gave them an image of a thumbs up. They responded incredibly well to that. 
and they loved having the independence of being able to engage with the stuff uh, remotely and at their own pace and place, similar to what Rob had described with our staff development activity, the self-paced one. Uh, our students loved it, absolutely loved it. And when they were doing the scenarios, they uh, it resonated with them an awful lot more when they were authentic examples. There were a couple of issues that, that they have. Um, Students did feel more in control, but lecturers felt less in control. And sometimes lecturers said, well, students that don't engage may fall further behind. So you need to keep an eye on that and maybe give them only a certain element of control. Uh, and when we examine that a little bit further with our, our colleagues, um, it actually emerged that the staff were reluctant to lose control that they have over it. So there was a little bit of the students having too much control or the staff not wanting to lose too much of their control. Um, but one of the findings that came through, and I was delighted when it did within the focus groups, was it's age and gender agnostic. People thought, oh, games, well, they're only for, for lads. And actually, games only work with young people. The volume of mature students that came back to us to say they loved having that clear navigation, they loved having that signposting, they loved the ability of them to go off and test their own knowledge without having to stick up their hand in front of the entire class, came back really, um, really well received uh, for us, no matter what the age you were. But I do put the asterisks there, and the asterisk beside it is it depends, and it depends on how you set it up. And one thing that the um, came back as, as a rule that mature students didn't like was the competitive element of um, the gamification where we had leaderboards. And the second thing they didn't like is when they were put in groups and the groups were competitive because they felt uh, engaging with groups was, was quite challenging for them, um, particularly the, the, the mature students that had other, let's just say, other restraints outside of their, their um, typical 18 year old student would have. Okay. Um, just two minutes there, Mark, if that's okay. Yep, perfect. Just literally on the last slide. And the last slide is gamification can work. Take it one step at a time. Uh, there are small things that you can do to change your, your class, to change your course pages, but, um, and don't try change everything all at once because you will fail. Um, with it. So have a go and talk to people like Rob and indeed so many people. There's Dave Ford here on the networks and Kenji have commented really experienced in the uh, area of gamification. And if you have any questions or comments, sure reach out now. Thank you very much, Mark.